Kia ora everybody, sitting back here with Dino Gladstone, um, this is cool because I've actually had the pleasure of meeting him in the flesh and, and what a powerful experience it was. Mate, while we're here, well, I usually ask people what they did last weekend and, and I was part of it, but <laughs> tell, tell us, you know, we, we, we got the prequel on the Friday night, tell us how, how the weekend went for you, obviously you guys went inter, interstate, you, you're based in Sydney, Mark's based in Victoria. What did, what did you reckon of it? So I love catching up with Mark and, um, you know, he's enthusiastic. He's literally brings a new word to, pa- new meaning to passionate. The guy <laughs> is just freaking awesome. Um, yeah, so getting together and, and running these courses or workshops with Mark, and it was actually the first time we had Katie, my girlfriend, more involved, who's mm-hmm. a, um, she's a fantastic yoga teacher, sort of quite passionate about it, but really... Um, She's a, uh, she's a bit shy, I think, in um, speaking out and finding her voice. So I've given her a little push and, and it brought this lovely dynamic into, into the team. And, uh, and Mark really responded well to it. So, yeah, we were up. Um, it was a pretty busy weekend. We were on the Goldie. We had to drive up to the Sunshine Coast for two and a half, three hours, set up for the Wim Hof workshop. And you put a lot into these workshops, and, but you get a lot back out. And, you know, you're sort of buzzing afterwards. And, yeah, I do a little bit of intermittent fasting, so I didn't eat before these workshops. So sort of next, next minute, it's sort of 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you haven't eaten, you, you're just high, you've jumped in the ice, there's people crying and hugging and laughing. And, yeah, and then it's like, oh, we've got another one tomorrow. And yeah. that's when we caught up with you down on the Gold Coast. Mate, it was, it was fantastic. And, and I... Um... Got to add to two of your lists, the, the men crying and, and, and the life-changing experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, and it's a beautiful thing. And, and Mark, Mark talks to it a lot. He's super passionate about men's health. And, and that's one of your passions too, right? Yeah. Um, and, that's, and that's where this podcast sort of comes from is that, mm. as, you know, Mark puts it elegantly, that's, that's bullshit. That, um, yeah. As men, we don't have this uh, vocabulary to express how we're feeling and, and I'm guilty as anybody when, when Alex, my partner, asked me how my day was. The, the answer is usually, yeah. usually good. And she says, well, elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> just, can't just, say good. It can't say good. Yeah. Yes. Can't say good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard, isn't it? Because you, you want to stay focused on positive and don't delve into your problems sometimes. But there needs to be an opportunity somewhere to let go and... and um, relieve a little bit of stress yeah um it's, it's funny you bring that up i was listening to joe rogan with adam somebody he does he does a cool um tv series called adam ruins e- everything including my profession okay. including my profession optometry has highlighted how <laughs> the luxotica group basically runs the world when it comes to trying to get your glasses um ah. but they were they were sort of having that, that same conversation. How the word masculinity is totally loaded, and yeah, you know, it's it's too black and white, and, and there's no room for any nuance or any in between. And and um, Adam sort of pointed out that we grow up with all these sort of um, perceptions that you know, in, in brackets, society might create. You know, toughen up, be strong, be disciplined and um, sort it out yourself. But whilst you, you've got to take responsibility for yourself and you've got to, you know, take action, at the same time, you need to be able to, to share it and let off some steam. Um, yeah, so I think something where you're completely out of control, like doing the Wim Hof Method and all this stuff comes up, is, is a hugely yeah. pow- powerful perspective to, you know, find out that something is there. <laughs> Yeah, and the beautiful thing is for the um, for the more masculine or m- macho men type that you you sneak them into the uh, to the workshop under the preface that they're they're coming for an ice bath and we're going to be strong and we're going to tough up, toughen through it and uh, all little behold and they they have this emotional release and they feel amazing from it and um yeah it's just lifts uh, lifts a weight off their shoulders like they like they haven't known before yeah and i think what as you said you know mark brings a new meaning to the word passion and i think what you guys portrayed on on the friday night was that you need to leave your ego at the door and he does and a sensational job of, of 
smashing that right from the outset when he says he, you know, was a was a in the building trade. He went along to the Wim Hof um, workshop with Wim and bawled his eyes out for five days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> immediately, yeah, you go well. It's, there's no excuses here, is there? <laughs> yeah, it, it really softens up the room. And it's, you know, if we can get an open room, which we, we seem to manage to be able to, and a lighthearted and a safe space and, you know, encourage learning and questions and um, connection, it's, um, it turns out pretty beautiful. And everyone, every workshop's a little bit different, but we managed to get there one way or the other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I said this when I when I covered it, covered my experience in the podcast I released this week that um, it was a bit of serendipity. Um, we we're almost about to take off to New Zealand, and, and Wimpole has been something that I've followed for a while. And to have an event like that just an hour away, it was like, yeah, got to got to do this. There was more of that yeah. serendipity. Um, on, on Sunday night, Wim was actually on the telly. Am, am, am I, I right? know. Am I right in saying some of some of the footage of you climbing a mountain was on that video, or, or am I wrong? I. That I climbed that mountain. I'm yeah. not sure if I was in the footage. I haven't. I didn't get to see all of it. I've got to watch. I've got to watch it again. I've um, yeah. Go, going away teaching Wim Hof week all weekend. It, it leaves you um a little bit behind the eight ball chasing, chasing life up yeah. the following week. So fortunately, it's a short week and um, school holidays has made life a little bit easier and a little bit harder at the same time, having the kids. But um. Yeah, so I don't think I'm I'm in the footage, but um, I have I have there is some footage that I created from my climb up Mount Snetsko in Poland, and um, yeah, I've been thinking about that experience a lot, and yeah, you know, it's it's great that people want to hear about it, and and you know, I I feel that there's a change in mentality, and that people are more open to this sort of stuff. So yeah, it's really beautiful, really beautiful space to be in. Yeah, and I guess it's. One of those things where you're trying to find the balance between is it because I'm putting this out to the world and it's coming back to me or is society on a whole having having this change or if I just found myself in the product, uh, the pocket of of people that are thinking this way and because I'm thinking about it so positively, I'm getting a lot of positivity back to you. What do you sort of feel about, you know, the vibes you bring out? <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, they what do, what do they say? You're a product of the seven people you surround yourself with. So, yeah, if you surround yourself with like-minded people, you generally tend to follow the same things and, and these sort of things are increasingly likely to pop up. Mm. But, um, yeah, I'm hoping there's a shift as well. Um, yeah, I'm yeah, super positive. I, you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, Wim was on the other night. You know, the more people that are getting exposed to it, the more passionate people are about it. And then, yeah, it's, well, yeah, I don't know what to say. I'm sort of lost for words, but it's, um, yeah, I love it. Nice, mate. So is, well, is the short and short and sweet answer. Yeah, man. Um, so while we're on, on the topic of, of climbing a mountain in your board shorts, what was your journey to end up there? And obviously that was a big, a big undertaking to tell us about um, how you end up on a, on a, mountain in the snow and board shorts at a beanie. Yeah, so for a lot of people, um, you know, Mark, you, you heard about and his story and a lot of people in the group, I, try, I climbed the mountain with a group of maybe 40 instructors. Mm -hmm. um, they had their sort of life-changing experience and it was more to do with the Wim Hof method. Mine started in 2000 and six i was at the football having a beer watching the football looking down one end and someone ran up and king hit me oh, uh, while i wasn't looking well while i was sitting down and they knocked out my forefront teeth they knocked me out i rolled down maybe six eight flights of seats and woke up with with uh, i could taste the blood in my mouth i could feel my teeth caved in and um someone was punching me in the face so that, that was the start of post-traumatic stress, anxiety, um, eczema, uh, all sorts of allergies that I'd never experienced before, um, a general unwillingness to want to leave the house. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, I sort of stopped drinking alcohol and, you know, I lost my health, basically. 
and I became hypersensitive to food and the environment. Mm. And it wasn't much fun. Um, you know, I had, if, if my diet was slightly out, my nose would block. And when your nose is blocked, you can't sleep at night. And it was just, it was tough. I was trying sleeping medication, counsellors, um, everything, anything. Um, and it just, yeah, it wasn't working for me. And uh, I ended up with a guy named Darren McKenzie, who's a Czech practitioner. Mm -hmm. And he was a holistic guru. Um, and we just went through my life and we just sort of went from the ground, sort of had to rebuild everything. Mm. And slowly but surely, you know, um, my goal was to get my health back. Um, at this stage, I was a lifeguard, a plumber and a personal trainer. Um, so I was dyslexic at school, you know, sort of spelling still, not my friend. But yeah, so there was, for me to earn a living, I, I basically need to be able to use my body in some way to work um, or did at that time anyway. And um, yeah, it was a super stressful, horrible period of my life where I um, had this massive journey of health. And, um, you know, whilst it was the worst thing that ever happened to me in some ways, it could be the best thing that's ever happened to me and sent me on this path where I've met all these wonderful people. Um, I certainly wouldn't be teaching yoga or sitting here right now talking to you. I highly doubt it unless that happened. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where it started. There's lots of, lots of paths that led me to Wim Hof, um, being a swimmer, doing some underwater work, you know, even the stress of being a lifeguard as well, it, it all contributes. And, um, you know, people's breathing patterns is super important. Um, it can literally be life or death down the beach. Um, someone that can control their breath will survive. Someone that can't, the increased likelihood of drowning must be tenfold. Hmm. And, um, you know, I, I've witnessed this firsthand. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just, cumulatively my life has just sort of all pulled me into this direction and it's been uh it's been an amazing experience last year to to be able to follow my heart and study and travel and just i uh, challenge myself mm. take myself out of my comfort zone and uh ending up on a mountain with wim hof terrified um but but doing it um achieving goals was was huge for me but um yeah the, the start was a long time ago and um, yeah, I feel that I'm stronger and smarter than I than I ever would have been if it didn't happen. Mm. Um, what what was the the prequel to someone trying to hit you? Mate, it's a, a long story, and I, I don't really want to go into it. The guy ended up being charged with grievous bodily harm. And if mm. it happened, if it happened today, that he, you know, he would he'd be in jail. Um, there's no, there, you know, those knockout punches and coward punches and all that sort of stuff but there was no provoking by me I didn't see it I didn't speak to the guy it was yeah it was a cheap shot I yeah it was very cowardly mm. um yeah and he got charged by the police I guess you know if it yeah as I said if it happened last week he'd be in jail mm. um and yeah that's the way society's changed and seen those things uh, which is good yeah um, and, and what sort of match were you? Were you, you said the footy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was, the, I was watching the Roosters, uh, the rugby league. Oh, good team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, and, you know, still to this day, I, I, I really get anxious going back to the football. Um, I'm not as bad in crowds now, particularly um, not a fan of peep, um, around drunk people. It, it really irks me, you know, when they sort of get this drunk, angry angry vibe it's like oh i'm out of here i'm not 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 interested in being around so it's um yeah it's still i still carry the scars uh physically and mentally um you, know, you can see my fake turf i guess everyone else can't but yeah um yeah and so do you still if it hold doesn't on? kill you it makes you stronger yeah do you still hold on to a little bit of that hypervigilance uh well i know um, being disciplined, um, you know, is really helps my health. Um, yeah, sort of practicing the Wim Hof, um, the less sort of, you know, sugar, gluten, processed food, alcohol, 
um, whatever your vice is, the, the less you have it, the better, most likely. Um, I'm generalizing here and, and I don't like to generalize, but um, yeah, so the, the discipline, um, you know, people I train, it's, you know, they say abs are made in the kitchen. <laughs> and I'm, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of, you know, you can't train out junk food or cigarettes. It's, it's you know, chemicals in your system, you're toxifying your body. Um, yeah, so it's, it's not, you're not running, going for a run after a can of Coke and it's all evening out. What it's done to your body is is not um, is not tra out trainable. Yeah, and that idea actually comes from the Coca Cola company to make you think that it's all right. So yeah, no, no surprises why we think that way when they're sponsoring things like. And e car. you know, even on Instagram yesterday, there's people sort of writing about how many how far you have to run with after a couple of Easter eggs, um, and it's it's you know having that sugar and, and all that stuff, which we've, a lot of us have been brought up on. Um, mm. And, you know, I, you know, I was, I, I used to drink lots of soft drink and eat lots of, eat lots of crap basically. And it's just, it's, it's no good for you. No, no. Um, on, on that, I, th I think in New Zealand, we sort of came from this pioneering area where, you know, most people were semi-rural and, and, you know, then you look at it, the likes of a big city like Sydney or, or even Auckland in New Zealand and and we're bombarded with everything prepared, you know, shop fronts, cafes, all of that. And as more and more of society gets into that sort of city, um, even a city like Sydney where the beach is right there, yeah, what do you sort of notice about the mentality of people coming in as clients looking looking to start their own health journey? Is Is there a lot of sort of decluttering the noise yeah Ryan. it's it's funny where i'm at bronte so it's to, i'm bondi's the next suburb mm -hmm. in terms of organic food and yoga studios um <laughs> this is probably the epicenter of maybe the southern hemisphere but most certainly australia um so access to things like paleo keto coconut gluten-free dairy-free vegan stuff is very accessible around here Mm. Uh, it is, yeah, whilst there is processed food and, and other stuff, there's, yeah, there's definitely a huge shift and there has been in the last 10 years. Um, for me, I, when I went on my personal journey after being assaulted, I was drinking coconuts. Um, this is, yeah, 2007, 2008. And people used to look at me like I had three or four heads. This is before <laughs> coconut water was everywhere. You know, it was... It was very, it was very strange to see someone drinking coke. Now it's, you know, the kids take it in their poppers to school. It's, mm. but it's, yeah. So it was, it, there's definitely been a huge shift. Like gluten-free stuff is everywhere. Mm. And um, although I advocate people to be gluten-free, there's a lot of gluten-free crap as well. That's full of sugar and vegetable oil and stuff that just makes me scratch my head. Um, but yeah, it's um, yeah. So it's where where we are. There is uh, opportunities for people uh, to access. You know, there's organic um, boxes that get delivered to people's houses, hmm. um, fruit and veggie boxes. So yeah, there, there's sort of organic meat delivery stuff that delivers online. So if someone is uh, able to do it and they have the budget, it, it is quite accessible where I am. Nice, and and people come in feeling that vibe or, or do you still have times where, where people think you're talking a foreign language where you, you know, you say something like that's got vegetable oil and it. It, it has yeah. this health, health washing label, but actually it's, it's a sugar vegetable oil packaged piece of crap. Um, do, do people, do you still get that sort of, Oh, what are you talking about? That's, that's a new thing to me or, or yeah. again, well, the shift's happening. The, the I quit sugar thing has been yeah. huge. Like Sarah Wilson wrote a book about it <laughs> and a program and like um, really like made that huge. And uh, I think there's a general consensus that even, you know, doctors were advocating low fat diets for years. Yeah. And um, personally for me and a lot of people that I've worked with, it just does not work. Now, some people still do it and I'm not going to say it's right or wrong. But the people I work with, I like somewhere in that sort of paleo sphere where we're eating a, a full fat whole food diet uh, seems to work well with the people I've worked with. Yeah. So the, yeah, getting people eating full fat whole food, um, 
it's a great start. The vegetable oil seems to be um, not as big. I actually sort of thought about maybe even trying to um, get companies frying in uh, in lard or or um, some sort of beef tallow oh, yeah. and trying to work 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 a business down that alley. But it's you know it's too far out of my out of my speciality really. Yeah, uh, I, I know what you mean there. I've, I've looked at uh, venison broth and and. Um, venison jerky without that's not covered in sugar and again it's like mm. you know you need a uh, kitchen and then you need a certificate and you go oh god I'm better off staying in, in my optometrist land and talking to people yeah. about what they're doing <laughs> i work with um or not work with i've done i've seen some guys called kui snacks they do yeah. a really oh. good um dried meat version um yeah so there's people out there that and they end up sort of seeing this lack of options in the market and that's what drives them yeah so there's a lady around the corner from me sula she mm. runs a place called the broth bar so you nice. can go and get a, a chicken bone broth organic chicken bone broth um you know seven days a week Lovely. and uh, they do a meal of the day it's everything's organic it's whole food it's slow cooked it's mm. um there's homemade sugar-free chocolate it's yeah i i buy frozen um frozen beef tallow ice cubes there that I cook and fry with at home. It's uh, yeah. So it's, as I said, I feel like I'm in a, I'm in a good place where, you know, there is access to this stuff, mm. but with my new clients getting, getting back to your question, it's, it's, you know, for someone that's not experienced in this, it's just, you know, slow and steady as she goes, it's three or four th things trying to make a couple of simple changes. Um, and you know, for a lot of people, it's just decreasing processed carbs mm -hmm. and trying to increase um, vegetables. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, some maybe buying a water filter, a good quality water filter. You know, just getting those simple steps in first, and then sort of progressing up the chain. Mm. You brought up um, Sarah Wilson there, and, and you know, she, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan as well. And, and she sort of pivoted out of the, the sugar realm and now into this sort of simplicious, sim, simplicious, is that it? Simpli yeah, simplicious. Yeah. Sim, sim, simplicious flow, uh, making your life flow, making your life less cluttered and easy. Um, yeah. Uh, again, serendipity, you've got, you've got things like Marie Kondo popping up in the world and um, essentialism and minimalism popping up. You know? Yeah. Um, and then on the flip side, she's also delving deep in, into anxiety. What, what do you think it's, uh, what do you think of that? You know, someone that's developed this voice that's then really now putting her neck out and diving into deeper, deeper topics. And, and she's, you know, you've got Bono in the background. She's often taking a photo very similar to that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, she, yeah, she is. I see Sarah all the time. Um, yeah, and I'm just so impressed with what she's done. Um, you know, her meditation teacher is my meditation teacher. And, I used to train with her at, at with Aaron, my mentor, one of my mentors that I mentioned before, that helped get me back on track. So it's you know all these things they aren't they aren't new, no. and you know in a way similar to the Wim Hof method, you know this cold therapy, cold showers, and, and breathing. It's not new, but yeah, it's putting a um, different spin and combining them in today's world, and and they're working really well for people. Mm. Yeah, mate. Um you said about how Aaron was a, was a Czech practitioner and, and yep. the, name, the name Paul Czech came up in an early episode and I mentioned how I'd, I'd seen a, a, we'd had a Swiss ball when I was, when I was little that had yeah. Mr. Czech on it with doing weights on a Swiss ball. Um, has, has Aaron's being a Czech practitioner, has Paul Czech's sort of philosophies and things come into your own life? You, like you mentioned organic food and, and water filters and stuff like that. Is it, have you yeah, so that was it? that was a big component of my um, yeah rebuilding after being a soldier, going through that post traumatic stress and a whole range of illnesses and stuff that I'd never experienced before. You know, if I had, if I would go out and I can't, you know, I can't pinpoint it exactly. I don't know, but I strongly suspect the sugar and the vegetable oil would make me scratch myself till I bleed mm. um, sometimes at night. So, um, yeah, I, I suggest, you know, the more I've researched it, if something was particularly rancid, possibly the vegetable oil or some sort of combination that my gut didn't like. Um, obviously, my gut needed healing as well at this stage. But, yeah, I would literally scratch myself in, 
um, in my sleep with my toes, digging them into my legs until I would draw blood. So, um, yeah, this hypersensitive, um, hypersensitivity that I had post assault, I tried to use it as my strength. Um, so yeah, I was, yeah, certainly focused on organic, fresh, local food, seasonal produce and yeah, you know, water is a huge part of the human body and the earth. So very important to have your water filtered. Um, and yeah, just doing all the little things right. And if you do all the little things right, all of a sudden the big things start to flow a little bit better. Yeah. Well, while we're on that, that vegetable world topic, we're lucky enough to have Michael Lewis, um, who's a medical doctor with, with the military, looking at post-traumatic stress disorder and traumatic brain injury and, and the links between the two. And you know, that, that's where the visual world really starts to, to play a pack because the high amount of omega-6 in there, and we're talking you know, ratios of omega-6 to omega-3 of, of 20 and 40 times, yeah. around um, four times. Um, three to one is it meant to be or yeah, yeah. Some, between three and six or something yeah anyway yeah and, and that's what you get naturally when it comes to things like you know grass-fed beef and you know you can you can go on and on but it's it's just simple um and and, and you mentioned that this hypersensitivity and you know allergies and eczema and things like that it's, it's because the the body is so ready to react to something but then yeah. because that ratio is out of whack it doesn't have the second phase of inflammation of, of resolution and, and you know if you have a brain injury as well you've got this reaction to protect the brain but then nothing to solve it and, and let it go and, and move forward and, and you know then you're just in this in this whirlwind of I, I can't get enough sleep I feel anxious because I don't have enough sleep I'm anxious so I can't go to sleep I've got a headache so I've got to take some medications which not mm. so then I miss out on the sleep I am getting is is disrupted yeah, yeah. um yeah, it's a crazy, um, crazy circle. And you see how people get stuck in it. And, mm. um, you know, and in some cases, they, they end up taking their own lives. Like mm. it's, um, yeah, suicide and depression. I work with a lot of mental health charities. And, um, you know, as a lifeguard, we've been drawn and inv invited to a lot of charity work over the years. And there is just no funding in those areas. And everyone knows someone that's taken their life. Mm. And it's... Um, yeah, it's huge. Um, I'm, I'm not sure of the name of it, and you, and you probably do know it, but the, the guys that um, meet on Bondo Beach and go surfing in colourful clothing, what's... Do, do you yep. have those Tour guys? Yeah, Tour Friday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm down there, so I see them all the time. Um, yeah, they're, uh, yeah they've, done a, they've done an awesome thing. And, um, you know, Grant, the, um, the leader of it, he was, yeah, he was struggling and he used to just, he used to get, joy from getting a wave mm. and he shared his story and uh, he got people he got people just meeting to, next thing they were dressing up doing a little bit of yoga a little bit of meditation and getting uh, getting a couple of waves and uh, just bringing a little bit of joy back into their lives and it, it really helped um yeah so they're down there one one wave is all it takes yeah um is what they're called and they're spread everywhere uh, up and down the coast, if you uh, if you Google it, there's probably one one near you. I see them national and international. It's uh, you know, and again, it's a non-government funded organisation, and they're doing mental health work, um, and it's it's awesome. Yeah, it brings me to another guest, Rob. Um, Rob from Movember New Zealand. It's the same thing. You know, you spoke about with the likes of Kui. You know, seeing a, seeing a gap in the market. Um, and I've spoken before about, you know, scratching your own itch. What, what's really sort of hurting you or, or driving you and how, how can you solve it for you? And most likely you're going to be solving it for many people. And it yeah. begins to grow leaks. Um, is, is that what you're sort of finding with, with del delving into this Wim Hof stuff? You know, it's beginning to grow leaks. Yeah, it certainly is. It's, you know, I teach, I'm a personal trainer. I teach yoga. Um, I teach meditation and, you know, sometimes you get a pretty positive response after classes, but, you know, after meditation, people just sort of say thank you and walk out. Yoga, occasionally you get a bit of a thank you and personal training, sometimes people get pumped, but, you know, teaching this Wim Hof, it is just extraordinary, the, the level of connection and, and 
and joy that you're bringing to people. Mm. It, it is, it is beautiful to, um, to share and facilitate. Yeah. And, um, you know, like, you know, I've really sort of found a niche where I've sort of sh shared part of my journey and encouraged people just to try it for a month. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I, you know, I don't like to say that, you know, apart from vegetable oil and sugar, I don't like to say that anything's right or wrong. I really, cause I'm not a scientist. I haven't done research. I, you know, I like to, you know, get people to try it and be open to things, open to change and open to possibilities. Um, yeah. So yeah, go in open-minded, try this Wim Hof stuff and yeah, the, the um, results are just amazing. You yeah, mate, even, even one week, um, as, I, as I spoke about, I'd, I'd been used to doing the Wim Hof just one round and um, you guys opened up a whole new dimension of, of my life, you go, going three, three rounds and, and just the amazing feeling that it takes and it's only been, been four days now. Um, yeah, 30 days is, in, the, in terms of your life, lifetime, especially the longer, you, you, longer in the truth you get, 30 days is, is nothing. Um, yeah, and, and there's, especially if it's 10 to 15 minutes a day, it's, yeah. it's uh, you know, I, don't, I saw something 1% of your day the other day, I can't remember. So I think it could have been about 14 or 15 minutes. Yeah, 1% um, yeah, of your day. I know how many seconds there are in a day, but not minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure we could do the math. Mate, yeah. um, obviously you've been on the telly with Bondi Rescue. What, what, you know, heavily populated beach, um, heavily populated destination beach, what's it like being up in that tower and, and going back to vigilance? What, what sort of processes and, and, and mindset do you have to have to sit there and, be aware that at any second you're in, in command of, of, well, you're in command of the beach the whole time. You, you're proactive, mm. but that things could go wrong. What usually sets sets the danger at, at a place like Bondi? Is it just the numbers or the way the surf works? Yeah, numbers. It's it's super unpredictable. Um, being a lifeguard, we we've had, you know, I've seen a guy get struck by lightning. Um, we've had cars <laughs> crash onto the beach. There's been shark attacks, um, heart attacks. It's just, you know, one day a guy was trying to baptise himself in the middle of the beach. There's 30,000 people there. And he's like, just leave me alone. And I'm like, no, you just go somewhere else. Like, there's 30,000 people on the beach. You, people are worried. Um, but, yeah, I, I wish I could actually jot down and remember all the, all the crazy things. Um, yeah, so, but in terms of it's, it's putting out the most, putting out the nearest fire really mm. um yeah and it you know it's really being on the ball it's a dynamic job with the ocean um the time of day the crowds the swell the wind direction um yeah there's a certain level of unpredictability the time of year what used to be really dangerous was the three big days are all situated around public holidays which mm. were notorious for alcohol consumption Mm -hmm. um, so that was Australia Day, Christmas Day and New Year's Day. So three hot summer days where traditionally Aussie people would go and get sort of really pissed or be really pissed from the night before. And that's when people's decision-making ability goes way down mm -hmm. and recklessness goes way up. And, yeah, that's just that's a recipe for disaster for us. Mm -hmm. And are you guys sort of having to play a sort of policing role you know, when it comes to that or, or do you get much sort of vandalism or, or you know petty crime happening in, in the beach that you guys have to deal with or is it you know safety and numbers when it comes to that sort of stuff yeah it's a funny it's a bit of a unique every day is different um you know there could be lunch breaks someone could be sick on the weekends we have the surf lifesavers helping mm -hmm. um and then you know middle of the week they're not there and it can be busier so it just depends how many staff there are if there's someone um, doing something wrong, whereas you know we, we just don't want someone to drown and die by some by, some, by someone smoking on the beach, for instance, or littering <laughs> on the beach, yeah. or even you know a, a couple are having a, a sneaky beer, an English couple are having a sneaky beer on Bondo Beach. They're not harming anyone. I'm not encouraging it, but you know I don't want to be running around telling them they can't drink and then for a little kid and his dad to die um, mm. somewhere else. So it's this. This interesting customer service 
a role where we can neglect some areas and focus on the most important things and still get away with it. Mm. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, um, you know, most people wouldn't say shouting is an effective form of communication, but for me, sometimes shouting at people um, <laughs> is the way that I get a sense of urgency across and um, have to do my thing and I have to move on. Um, Cause you know, if you literally do the numbers, there could be 10,000 people on the beach for every lifeguard and we cannot get caught up with one idiot, um, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and and, and I don't mean that in a derogatory sense. I get sometimes it is, but sometimes we are dealing with idiots and it can be quite frustrating. Um, yeah, you know, rescu rescuing the same people multiple times is, is frustrating. But yeah, you know, it is what it is. You, we're there to do a job and, and we do it. Mm. Uh, what's, what's portrayed on the, on the show a lot is, is this sort of, real drive and determination to be part of the sort of full-time lifeguards. How, what motivated you to, you know, you said come from a swimming background, what motivated you to get, get after this as, as part of your life? Uh, mate, I, yeah, I grew up down the beach. I was, um, I was down Bondi as a kid and Maroubra, all the local beaches. And I used to, I used to just love it. Mm. I used to love being at the beach. I was swimming or surfing. And they used to look super cool driving around in the buggies. <laughs> and one day they were, um, that was probably a high, a high motivation. One day they were doing a medical emergency. They don't CPR. And my mum, my mum's a nurse and she explained to me what they were doing. And it was just, you know, really awesome for me to think, you know, a lifeguards paddled, swam or paddled out, pulled that person in and, and, and brought him back to life. And it's like, oh, I could, I could do that. I'd be good at that. And um, yeah, I guess, yeah, I wanted to do it from there. Mm. Yeah. And so, yeah, I finished my plumbing apprenticeship and then, yeah, I got straight on the beach, maybe 21, 22 year old. And it was nice that I did something else first, sort of some sort of education. Probably starting as a lifeguard around 18 wouldn't have given me some appreciation, knowledge and skills that I, that I picked up being a, a plumber. And um, yeah, it's nice to have a couple of, forms of education I think yeah and so you, you're you're a handyman now then what was you know when the toilet breaks at the gym is they call on you <laughs> no no I'm, I'm not uh, I wasn't a great plumber my boss uh, <laughs> my boss uh, my old boss we, we, we still joke about it um, to this day actually when I got my uh, 500 litre freezer only a couple of weeks ago, I was siliconing it up and uh, I sent him a photo. I said, mate, look at this. I've got better. And uh, he thought it was quite funny. Yeah, what are we but, talking about? Uh, that? Yeah. What are we talking about? That? How, how long have you got it rigged up? Because it's something I'd like to look into when I get back to New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, so I was trying to buy one second hand, but it was just tricky. There was just, and you, there was, you, you don't know how old they are or if they're banged up. So I ended up purchasing an, a Westinghouse, I think. And that's what Mark's got. And so I just sort of wanted to find out. And there's a, it's a Facebook group as well. So yeah, I bought a brand new 500 litre chest freezer. They're the bigger ones. I cleaned it. I siliconed it. I cleaned it and I siliconed it. And then I cleaned it again. And then I filled it with water. Mm -hmm. And um, then I put it, I left it on for about a day and a half. It started to, uh, freeze up some huge chunks of ice then I put it on a on a timer it's on a timer for about an hour and a half or two hours a day mm -hmm. and so when I have a morning swim in there I reckon it's uh, about two degrees and um, yeah I've been jumping in sometimes before I breathe like the first thing in the morning and yeah. it just like what it does for your circulation is absolutely mind-blowing yeah you, you, it's one of those ones where you hope to hope to get a before and after shot uh, instead of a a white person, then you go into freezing cold water and you come out in your bright red, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So, I, you know, a lot of people talk about the Wim Hof method being a, a, a great hangover cure. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my, my days of big nights have long gone. And, um, yeah, I haven't, you know, haven't had a drink recently, so I haven't been in the ice bath afterwards. But I can imagine it would be amazing for it if, <laughs> um, yeah, again, I'm not advocating drinking or being hungover. But, yeah, it's... Um, what it does for your body is just, is it awesome? Yeah. And um, my other question is, how do you change the water? Because um, Dr. Greg, Dr. Greg Emerson, I saw him rig up a little bit of a piping system, but um, yeah, what are you doing? 
Yeah, mine's only what, only two or three weeks old. It's it's got a nice couple of um, plugs that I can just empty it. So I'll just turn it off and, and empty it, give it a clean and refill it. Um, yeah. yeah, depending on how much use it gets, I guess that'll be done between weekly or monthly. Um, I, I I need to do some more research, but at one or two degrees or whatever that temperature is, I'm assuming there's not going to be too much bacteria or anything in there. Um, yeah. And yeah, it depends. Yeah, how much use it's getting, and um, people are putting hydrogen peroxide in theirs. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll just yeah, I'm just going to play with it and do do a bit more research. And if I can just have it with water, I, I chucked a couple of little drops of essential oils in. Yeah. Um, I wanted to put some magnesium in there for therapeutic benefits, but there some I read somewhere that may increase the chance of it rusting. So yeah. yeah, again, I'm just sort of feeling it as I go and doing a little bit of research. And um, yeah, at the moment it was just nice and clean and a couple of drops of, um, I think I used a eucalyptus or a lemon essential oil, which has some clean properties as well. Yeah. And did you say that, that plug came, came with it? Uh, yeah. So there's a little hole at the bottom and that it'll empty really nicely for me. It'll empty straight into a uh, floor drain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'll just, um, yeah, and there's a little, yeah, so it'll be really easy to, I don't have to tip it over or anything or, or drain it. I've got it in a great little spot where it's, um, where it will empty nicely. Nice, mate. Um, you know, obviously you're, you're a yoga instructor. What do you, what do you sort of, what's your take on, on modern day yoga and, and why, why you think it's another tool to, to the bow that? That's especially in a life where we spend a lot of time sitting, um, whether that's in front of a computer screen or, or stuck in our cars and traffic. Where, where do you think something like yoga has a place as opposed to, um, you know, going for a long run all your life or, or the other end of the spectrum being in the gym all your life? Where, where does yoga, as a tool, what do you think that is going to offer to someone's completeness? Yeah, so what got me into yoga was the the flexibility or the mobility. Like I was sort of struggling to, to I definitely couldn't touch my toes um, when I was a competitive swimmer. And so, yeah, I just, I just wanted a little bit more um, mobility through the hamstrings. And I started, started doing it and I started to quite enjoy the challenge of it and then fell in love with the breath work, which mm. is, I guess, which is what led me to the Wim Hof stuff. Cause it's, you know, I, I believe why people feel so good after a yoga class is because they're just focusing on their breath. Um, and, you know, the breath is, as you know, from the workshop that we did on the weekend, there's people that aren't breathing correctly. Um, you know, 99% of people that I come across could, could breathe better. Uh, mm. I come across people with inverted breathing patterns. There's, yeah, there's a whole range of things going on there. And uh, I, I, I was reading a book recently where people, when they breathe better, they actually become smarter. Their IQ goes up in a test. So, um, again, this is, all, this is all real stuff. And if you're, you know, Olympic athlete or trying to perform better or, or got a high-stress job, breathing better and feeling better can make a great difference to your week. Mm. Can you tell us a bit more about what you mean by an inverted breathing pattern? So we, we did some diaphragmatic breathing on the weekend. Mm. When you breathe in, your diaphragm pushes down towards your stomach and your belly gets bigger. Um, I see people breathing in and it going the other way. Mm -hmm. Sucking it up. So yeah, that's lifting their chest. Yeah, a reverse. Yeah, reverse or inverted breathing pattern. It's got a couple of names. Different people call it different things. But yeah, and it, people really struggle with this diaphragmatic breathing. Um, stuff and, and again it's it's um, yeah it just takes a little bit of know-how and a couple of little tricks and and you um you know people really feel good like the response from as you saw on the weekend like a couple of minutes of breathing at the start people are like oh I feel relaxed this is this is nice <laughs> yeah uh, I guess um without realizing get super lucky coming from swimming background and and uh, I did speech and that was you know you got to talk from your diaphragm and inflate the diaphragm yeah. in, into costume. The opera singers as well. Uh, yeah, right and then they right did some singing, sort of stuff. singing choir again. It was like, you know, you've got to get this you know, diaphragmatic intercostal breathing, you know, okay. And then, then you go through uni and, and you speak about some of those other life choices, not sleeping, too much drinking and eating crap. And, you know, I was snoring for a long time and 
even even cutting back the junk and and doing what I thought was the healthy diet. We used to be spoke about that sort of low fat, lean, um, all the vegetables, you know, potatoes and, and stuff. I was still snoring a bit, and it's not until I sort of started dabbling a bit more keto, a bit more um, sort of fatty meat and stuff that that's that's completely gone. And it's not unless I've absolutely burnt the candle and and I'm, I'm shattered that that's the only time that I snore anymore. And um, yeah. That's that's one of the, the key things that Matthew Walker said. If you snore, you really need to check out your your breathing and make sure you don't have sleep apnea, you know, without holding your breath or anything. But yeah, that's right. That, that obstructive breathing is is hugely detrimental to the way that your your brain functions when you're in that sleep. And and as, as we spoke about before, if you don't have the sleep, then you don't have the rest of the things, and and, and the cycle begins. Um, yeah, it's a, it's crazy, isn't it? It's so simple. Some of these techniques to, yeah. to feeling better, and you know, even with some of my clients, it's like, oh, you know, what, what time are you going to bed? And they're like ten thirty, eleven. I'm like, well, let's, you know, try try to go to bed an hour earlier and see how you feel. Yeah. So, oh wow, I feel better. So, wow, who would have thought? <laughs> and I think that's where um, this sort of modern modern idea, and you know, everyone watching the the series on Netflix, not that there's anything wrong with unwinding with, with a series on Netflix, but when we're up till 10.30 in front of a screen being absolutely stimulated, watch, watching a series at night and getting to bed at 10.30, midnight, and then we've got to be at a job in, in the morning at 9 o'clock, wondering why we, we feel like us and we can't be bothered doing anything. It's, yeah. it's no surprise, is it? Yeah, um, yeah, particularly with all these um, blue lights in our devices now and they're known to stimulate and um, uh, yeah, it, it reduces melanin. I think I don't know if I'm getting all this right, but um, yes. yeah, uh, it, it doesn't help us sleep, um, yeah. which is that which is which is right. And um, yeah, so yeah, sort of switching those devices, getting those sleep hygiene practices down, and trying to turn the devices off an hour or two before bed is is the best way to go. Absolutely, mate. What what's going to be coming up? You, you gave us a teaser. At the event, what are you, what are you, Mark and, and Katie got got planned? And, and I saw it on your Instagram the other day as well. That sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, so um, you know, we we touched on it earlier last year. Um, me climbing the mountain in Poland, and that was a goal. When I had a year off lifeguarding, I wanted to set myself a goal that I didn't think I could achieve, or would absolutely scare the pants off me, or really, really excite me. And that was the goal I set. Um, yeah, the cold was not was not my friend and something that scared me. Um, yeah, so I ended up, you know, travelling to Europe, going to Wim's house, and then in Poland with a group of 40 strangers who I am very close to now. And we, we went up a mountain together and it was just a mind-blowing experience. And I got really internalized a lot of it you really come come into yourself and you learn a lot about yourself so this sort of cold therapy and this breath works for part of the the Wim Hof method um and this ability to to do something special or to take yourself in out of your comfort zone is is what we're going to bring into a uh, retreat in Sydney in the Blue Mountains Mm. Uh, along with some other stuff that Wim's passionate about. Uh, you know, for those that have seen Wim's courses, they would know he's a uh, super passionate yogi. And, uh, yeah, we'll tie it all together and uh, teach people some of the secrets that that Wim Hof has and that he lives by and, you know, why he's able to do what he's done, hold 25 world records, you know, breathe out illness and... And, um, yeah, do some of the magical things he does as well. Um, yeah, I'm going to sort of, you know, I've been over and, and climbed a mountain with him in Poland. I'm going to try and bring that experience back to Australia. Yeah, and, and being Australian, how did you feel about mountains? <laughs> uh, well, I was scared of the cold. Yeah. So not, not necessarily scared of the mountains, but, yeah, I was definitely terrified of the cold. So it was a, it was a big week. And there was, yeah, it was, I learnt mind over matter. Mm. I was that, you know, everyone's able to do a little bit more than they think they can. And in my case, it was a lot more than I thought I could. And I was able to do it. And um, the sense of pride and, and, uh, and I was just stoked. I was just so happy. 
Mate, um, I just thought of, thought of something there. With, with, the, with the yoga, how does that sit in terms of the, the paleo and, and sort of that, that sort of aspect of, of food? You often um, see a lot of yogis going down the sort of plant-based route. Um, where, does, where does that sort of sit with you or, or that's, that's not something that you delve into? Yeah, um, there, there are a lot of vego and vegan yogis. They're also, in my teacher training though, we went through it, there's 24 in the class. This was a couple of years ago and there was only one vegetarian, no vegans. So there is, there is a, um, a general thought that a lot, of, a lot of people are vegan or vegetarian. Um, but yeah, my experience, all my girlfriends making funny faces at me, she calls herself plant-based. Yep. Um, and, you know, I, I like to see people eating whole foods, whole food diets. Um, and again, I've played with it myself. It doesn't work for me personally. But, you know, the yoga that I teach is more about movement and breath and less about some of those other, other things. And I think there's, a, there's enough in that that I can simplify it for people and bring them into yoga and and get them into that base base yoga stuff where they're just moving and breathing and if they want to go deeper then i'm probably not the person to take them there yeah and, and what sort of yoga did you learn with so i teach a vinyasa flow so i used to go to a hot yoga um a local school called body mind life and you know i just love the teachers they're beautiful people beautiful energy they heat the room up to about 30 degrees Mm. And it's yeah, it's quite uh, it's quite a workout. Awesome yeah. cardiovascular strength, mobility. It's uh, yeah, it's quite thorough. Yeah, it was it was a personal favourite of mine when I was in Christchurch, and that was going from a from a frosty evening into a hot room and uh, and doing either vinyasa flow or um, a bit of yin, which when, that was before I had my hip surgery. So sitting yeah. in a in a pigeon for five minutes was. It was beautiful <laughs> yeah did you ever do bikram yoga back in the no I, I, only hot yoga so i think we yeah say 32 degrees and 30 degrees um still still enough to get get sweating and even um now i'm doing crossfit this morning we were it looked like i'd been swimming in my clothes <laughs> yeah it's yeah well it's, it's so good for you to sweat isn't it oh absolutely and, and physically and mentally yeah, sort of the other end of the spectrum to Wim Hof, and he, and he, he himself has a has a sauna in his house. So, you know, it's yeah. Well, the hot cold therapy is great as well. Yeah, and um, you know, being in our sauna, it's it's almost it's it's like yeah. the other end of um, being in an ice bath. You, you can't stay in there forever. It'll probably kill you if you <laughs> if you try to. Um, but it's good for you. The body responds positive, positively. Yeah. Nice, mate. Um, now, uh, we talked about your links um, on Friday in, in the last last episode, but I'll, I'll be sure to have those in the in the show notes again. Um, it's whatever app you're on, you just scroll down into the notes and, and you can click on Dino's links. Do you have Do you have any? You've got a website as well as your your Instagram. Is that right? Yeah, Dino Gladstone uh, dot com. My Easy. website. Um, yeah, easy. Same as same as my Instagram handle. Um, yeah, I've got a Facebook page and I've yeah, got YouTube pages. I've got sort of social media and bits and pieces everywhere, um, which is, I guess, yeah, part of the part of the fun lifeguarding and making. There's lots of videos of me surfing with my kids, but there's uh, there's a there's a nice journey of me climbing the mountain in Poland. Um, sort of part of my instructor instructor um, week and part of you know what i did basically it, it takes you through part of the week so um yeah for people that are interested they they'll be able to watch that lovely and um we always get people to leave us with something whether that's an ask or a way that they're currently thinking or um, a, a thought process that's got them out of it or even just sort of an idea that they want to share what what would you like to leave us with then well, you know, I, I talked about challenging myself today and taking myself out of my comfort zone. Mm. And, um, yeah, I'd like to encourage people to do that. Um, yeah, do one thing at least every year that, that scares you a little bit. Because mm. um, if you're not, you're, you know, you're, you're not living life to the fullest. 
absolutely. And uh, our toilet at the gym has that, um, you know, fantastically simple quote that life happens at the edge of your comfort zone. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, absolutely. And, you know, but getting in the ice bath every time, it is, you just, you're there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you're not ready for that, even flicking the, getting in and, and flicking the shower on before it gets hot. That's, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, it's, an, it's, it's enough. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I, you know, I love being in the ocean. I love being in the big waves. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I didn't love the cold as much. And, um, yeah, and now, I, now I crave it. Hi, um, your kids have just come in. Um, Alex is, yeah. Alex is keen on, keen on stuff and I'm sure my wee daughter's going to get up. So we'll wrap yeah, it up cute. here. Oh. Ryan, great to chat, mate. Legend. And, and, and again, I just want to um, express massive gratitude and thanks for last weekend. It was, it was awesome. All right. Well, I look forward to catching up next time. Cheers, buddy.